undisclosed location. Now we are in London, as I'm sure you've gathered. Now weirdly, this whole week is gonna be fairly undisclosed due to the very nature of the incredibly exclusive content I'm gonna be bringing you. Uh, but in short, I'm gonna be spending the rest of the week in a McLaren F1, driving it around Europe to various awesome locations. So I'm in the underground car park now, approaching this wonderful car. seat of the McLaren F1. Of course, McLaren F1 is famous for its three-seat configuration, but the week ahead is going to be absolutely outstanding. We're doing a Euro tour. We're going to be stopping off at places like Spa, Nürburgring. We're going to the Porsche factory. We're going to be just immersing ourselves in some of the iconic locations in Europe in one of the most iconic cars ever made. Which brings me on to the significance of this vehicle. But this car specifically used to be owned by Rowan Atkinson. If you're not familiar with his name, he also went by the name of Mr. Bean. It was, it's been in the news uh, twice for having a crash. Once was a fairly substantial crash, once was too bad. Uh, but since my friend has got a hold of it, the reconditioning of it is almost back to brand new. It is absolutely sublime. So this car is just steeped in history. So to put the design and ethos of this car into context, here's a few stats to give you an idea of the level of craftsmanship and dedication that went into making this car. So, for example, the carbon tub alone takes around 3,000 man-hours to make. Now, to put that into context, the average Toyota takes 17 to 18 hours to build an entire car. So, so just the chassis takes 3,000 hours. The throttle pedal uh, is handcrafted from six separate pieces of titanium. Uh, the instrument panels are handmade, they're hand painted, and each needle is individually machined. Of course, one of the most unique features of this car for the driver is the central seating position, which hasn't ever happened on any other road car since. So, yeah, incredibly significant car. So I believe the average price for a McLaren F1 these days is around about 14 million pounds. <laughs> and that's the average price. The race cars with more history go for even crazier figures. So, yeah, to say that I'm about to do a 3,000 mile road trip in one of the most iconic, one of the most expensive, or one of the most amazing road cars ever built is just, I, I lack the vocabulary to convey how significant the next week is gonna be. And as always, I, I'm just so thankful that we have this amazing medium and platform where I'm able to share this experience with you guys. Just paid for the tickets for the Channel Tunnel. But by the way, we also have Luke joining us in the 1M, which is doubling up as camera car. Look at this, this is service. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Passport. Handles right up here. Huh? I know. <laughs> Hi. 
if any of you have been watching my channel since so when did we film together last December uh Pagani Pagani to, Dubai to Italy yeah yeah that video if you saw that video Thad was crew on that and uh yeah helped film the proper polish I'm actually production. when you went to Bahrain I'm in the background of some of your yeah stuff. of course so anyway Thad, Thad's made a, a few appearances on this and now you're being official cameraman again document yes, our terrible journey trip. I can't wait yeah so you've this is your second time to Europe yeah. Second time. That's it. So Thad's based out in Dubai, but you're from California. Yeah, I've seen all of the United States. All the states. Um, and you've been to Paris? And London. And London. That's it. So now you're gonna have, you're gonna be thrown in at the deep end on a cross continental yeah. road trip. I can't wait to see Spa is what I'm really God, stoked about. Dude, it's I wanna beautiful. See, it's supposed to it's be so like beautiful. massive. The undulations are huge. Like yeah, yeah. when you see a rouge, it's like, whoa, that is yeah, a yeah. Cause I've played it yeah. a bunch of times, but yeah. I wanna like, See it, see it. Have you, has it sort of sunk in what's happening here? Not yet. <laughs> no, Not yet. I need, yes. I need to see it. I need it's, to blow by it. Yeah, when one drives fastest. Yeah, it's been, we've been cruising through London traffic and this yeah. and that and making wrong turns, but I mean, so I've, far so good. I've been sat in it, but it's cozy in there. It's, it's cozy. It looks tiny. It's really tiny. I've, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm quite small, <laughs> but even still, it's like the shape of the seat pushes your like shoulders quite far forward. Yeah. So. You, you're kind of con constantly sat like this. I, but, I like how you have to look out like the small, tiny window, yeah, like, like a child in the back I'm seat. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm sat on the left-hand side. Okay, well, uh, keep changing because you have the pleasure of sitting either left or right. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah. But we have a bag on the right-hand side right okay. now. So, um, and, uh, and send, me, send me some uh, hugs and kisses from where you are. I will do, man. <laughs> it's not going to be the same without you, man. Like, it's not going to be the same looking in the wing mirror yeah. and seeing no green GT3. Yeah, well, the green GT3 is missing you as well. Oh, mate, soon though. Let's uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to do a road trip again soon. Are you going back home? Are you going back to. I'm, I'm flying literally tomorrow morning with my brother back home. That's why I couldn't make it. Ah, oh, that's a real shame. Well, we'll send you some pictures. Not to make you jealous, yes, please, just uh, please, just to keep you in the loop. Tag, tag, me, tag me when you post anything so I would uh, keep on uh, tracking you. Uh, all right, bro, sounds good. Okay. Th thanks for your call. I'll speak bye. to you soon. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye. That was Bandar. If you watched our journey to Geneva two months ago, that was the guy with the uh, green GT3 RS. Uh, he was supposed to be joining us on this trip, but he can't, so he's just phoning up to say, have a good time. If I was missing out on an F1 road trip, I'd, I'd be, be crying upset. into my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been texting people, the boys back home, they're like, guess what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm like, you wouldn't believe what's going on. So yeah, we're just about to uh, disembark from the, listen to that thing, uh, from the Channel Tunnel into France and then very shortly into Belgium before arriving at Spa. Belgium, not too far from Bruges. We actually stopped here on the way to Geneva a few months ago. Weather was totally different. It was absolutely pouring down. But it's rude to drive through a town that has an amazing Ferrari dealer and not drop in and say hello. So let's pop inside, see what they got. Last time they had that uh, Grigio Silverstone LaFerrari. Apparently, they sold it since, and it just so happens that it's come back in for a service. So we just so happened to be here at exactly the same time. This, however, 599 SA Aperta. Really rare. I think they made 80 of these. In fact, it should say, should say inside. Yeah, here we are, look. One of 80. 
Uh, essentially, uh, they have the 599 GTO engine, but the running gear and uh, the exhaust setup is a bit more chilled, so it's not as loud as a GTO and it's not as hard. But it does have pretty much GTO engine, and of course the biggie, be able to take the roof off your GTO, essentially. Imagine one of those with an exhaust on it. Essentially a topless 599 GTO. Super, super special stuff. And they also have a car that, to be honest, I never knew actually existed. This is the Gonzalez edition. As I mentioned, I didn't even know this car existed, but this is celebrating a guy called Froilan Gonzalez. He was actually the chap that won Ferrari's first ever uh, Formula World Championship, funnily enough, at the uh, British Grand Prix. There's only six of these in existence. The tweaks are quite subtle. You wouldn't really know it was anything special unless you really look, but the things that stand out the most, contrasting belts, really nice seats, contrasting black line here, different tailpipes, and odd contrasting fuel filler cap, which personally I'm not sure about, but yeah, anyway, pretty cool. The fine detail, however, scooter rear shields, hand painted. I know that is an incredibly expensive option. Scooter rear. So anyone who watches my channel may or may not know that my very first Ferrari was a scooter rear, and that unfortunately it ended quite abruptly with me writing that car off by putting it into a hedge. Such a terrible story, but it's one of my favorite all-time cars, probably because it was my first, but also they sound phenomenal. And it was one of the, the few brands that managed to get a single clutch gearbox right. I've never felt a single clutch box as crisp as these high clutch. day in the F1. Absolute magic. Look at this. The attention to detail on this car is ridiculous. Annoyingly, I can't convey to you a sense of weight <laughs> on, <laughs> on camera, but that is without doubt the lightest spanner I've ever felt. It's, it's titanium, and despite the engine bay being gold coated, they, they are not, but they look awesome. They look, quite they look nice. super cool. Look at these. How much time is that way? These, this is... That's a pretty light weight in terms of, like I said, the spanners. Yeah, this but is... I'm super impressed with, impressed with these. Like when you pick these up, honestly, that is a feather. Well, here's a question. What can you actually fix on this car with, <laughs> with these I tools? know, is this just like a gesture of, of awesomeness? I don't know if... You know, what do you want to fit with, like, fix with this? It's like, oh, that, okay. that feels like a toothpick. It's yeah. just a joke. Oh my God. It's <laughs> so light. It's Next crazy. on our series of Will It Bend. <laughs> Will it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hazard to guess how much. I mean, how much would it be to replace a spanner set? So on an F40, it's like for some owners, it's like the, the difference between buying the car or not. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. imagine what it's like on this. Well, I've been to the concourse and people have like their toolkit <laughs> laid out. And, like you've never, those tools have never, <laughs> never touched seen the car. Taylor. These little gold tip Ooh. screws are just, yeah, madness. And it all squashes into here. So this is technically the sort of front. Front. boot the frunk but it's only really for the spanner set which kind of sits here the actual boot is the uh, side compartments here anyway to the hotel all right check-in complete first day of the road trip in a mclaren f1 this mclaren f1 <laughs> what just what a phenomenal experience. Now we are on the road for quite a few days. 
So uh, I'm going to try and bring you a driving video at some point, but we are constantly trying to make up ground, trying to get to the next point on our trip. Um, so there will be a, a point where I'm going to be driving that car and talking to you about it. But until then, this is going to just be just an opportunity to saturate your eyeballs in quite a sensational experience. I mean, to say it's not every day that you get to drive a McLaren F1 is possibly the biggest understatement of the year. So uh, anyway, we're just going to put this thing to bed and call it a day. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.